UFC 307 is coming up next weekend, and today, guys, I have the complete betting guide for you with timestamps if you'd like to skip to any part of the video. Hello, everybody, and welcome back to another video. If you're new here, my name is Kyle. I am your guy with many YouTube channels. We're going to be going through my confident picks, underdog opportunities, fights that I do not believe you should be betting on, my personal lock of the week, and then we're going to close out the video with a more fun section, that being looking for some props and making some fun parlays. And again, guys, Timestamps are there if you'd like to skip to any part of the video. Typically right here, I would show the betting recap for last weekend, guys. But unfortunately, I don't know what happened to the community post, but I am unable to access it on YouTube. I don't know if it's bugging out on studio at the moment or anything like that. If you guys are really, really interested in the idea of like that I might be capping for you, I can make a reaction video to the members only video that I did. We did have a clean sweep. We hit all of our bets besides, of course, the fun parlay, but we don't exactly expect a long parlay to hit. But we did hit the plays that we did make last time around. So I'm hoping for a little bit more success this time around because I do have some interesting picks and I have picked quite a few underdogs for myself and it's going to be a little bit of, it's going to be a interesting week for betting guys. But anyways, with that being said, let's get into the confident picks for today. The first one being Farid Bashrat. Guys, a lot of people are off the, fa are off the Bashrat train. I am still very much on the Bashrat train. I think he's just better than Victor Hugo. Victor Hugo could clip Farid Bashrat, but even if, like, that's the only way that I see Victor Hugo winning this fight, I think that Farid Bashrat is just the better fighter in most aspects of MMA, and I can't wait to see this fight in general. Now, guys, if you are interested in me diving into these fights as deep as I could possibly go, I already have a full card breakdown video for you to check out if you would like to see more of than just the general, like, I think Farid Bashrat is going to win this fight. The next confident pick I have for you guys is going to be Shara Magomedov, he's taking on Armin Petrosian. While I do believe Armin Petrosian is a very good fighter in himself, I believe this will be a stand-up fight, and I think that Shara Bullet Magomedov will just be more active. He'll land more. They're fighting in Abu Dhabi, and they'll definitely want Shara Magomedov to win. So I definitely give him the edge there, and I do think that Shara Magomedov is going to get the win there. So those were the only two confident picks that I have for you guys this weekend, but I do have two underdog opportunities that I would like to move on to. Now, these underdogs aren't necessarily picks of mine. Actually, in this case, both of them are, but <laughs> I'm just saying that they're not exactly like super confident picks of mine. I'm just saying if you're looking for value for your bets, it wouldn't shock me at all if these underdogs did get the win. And for this week, I actually do believe that they're going to win, but it's important to note that I do seem to be in the minority with these two picks. So maybe I'm not seeing something the whole world is. With that being said, let's get into it. The first underdog opportunity is going to be Alexander Rakic. Guys, I think he's a better fighter than Magomed Ankalaev. I think he's going to chew up the front leg. I think he's going to have more tools to win. I think even if Magomed Ankalaev wants to come in and stand up with Alexander Rakic, which we know that's an idea that Magomed might be coming in for because he wants to get that title fight, I think that Rakic is going to outdo him in pretty well all aspects of MMA. I think he's a bigger imposing figure his losses have aged extremely well he won this fight against Volkan Uzdemir Jan Blahovich and who's beating the brakes off of Yuri Prohoshka there I think that and I, I didn't even note against Jan Blahovich that that he was also beating Jan Blahovich until the leg injury there I think he's a vastly underrated fighter and I cannot believe that he is as big of an underdog as he is so I do think that Alexander Rakic is going to win the fight next up let's keep going Robert Whitaker. I don't think that Hamzat Shmaev will finish Robert Whitaker in the first round. If he does not finish Robert Whitaker in the first round, it is going to be a very, very long night for Hamzat Shmaev because Robert Whitaker is going to beat the brakes off of Hamzat Shmaev. It's not going to be Kamar Usman that's equally as gassed taking this fight on short notice. This is going to be a Robert Whitaker that wants to get his title back, and we've seen that in his last two performances. I think that Robert Whitaker, I think what's most likely to happen in this fight is for Robert Whitaker to actually survive the round one against Hamzat Shmaev and then come back and absolutely dominate in the rest of the fight. So I am picking Robert Whitaker to get the win there. Those are two underdogs that I do believe are going to do very well, if not win the fight. Let's continue on to guys. There are three fights that I believe you should not be betting on. And actually, the first one is just because I think it's a really close fight. I don't really know what's going to happen. Abu Smagomedov versus Bruno Ferreira. You have two fighters that are not necessarily inconsistent, but I'm not sure what to think of Abu and where he belongs in the division now. Bruno Ferreira, he's 12 and 1. Yeah, we did see him get we did see him lose to Nuroslan Ruzibov, and that was a good opponent to lose to, but then he came back and got like two really nice wins. But then again, in saying that, how much do you really want to hold these wins into account? So I don't know, man. I just don't know exactly what place both of them are in their career right now. And I think that it's a fight that's gonna be a little bit difficult to bet on. The next fight that I do not believe you guys should be betting on is Miktebek Orovai taking on Mateusz Rebecki. 
two really, 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 really good prospects coming in, taking on each other. I just think that you guys shouldn't be betting on this fight. That's pretty well it. And I think it's important to note, like a lot of people are counting out Rebecca after his last fight. I'm not ready to count him out yet because in the second round of that fight against Diego Ferreira, where he ended up losing, I don't remember if it was in the second or third, but regardless, I meant like what happened in the second round is literally both of his eyes got shut. How is he supposed to continue fighting like that? I'm not ready to count him out. I think both fighters are fantastic, and I do not believe you should be betting on this fight. Lastly, I do not believe you should be betting on Ilya Taporia versus Max Holloway. This is about as 50-50 as a fight as you can get for a lot of people just predicting the fights, everybody breaking down the cards. You have the new champion, Ilya Taporia, taking on the experienced Max Holloway and former champion. Both fighters are phenomenal. I don't know what's going to happen. Nobody knows what's going to happen. Very, very difficult fight to predict, so I do not believe you should be betting on that fight either. Now, guys, let's talk about my personal lock of the week, and that is going to be Jeff Neal taking on Rafael Dos Angeles, Jeff Neal being the lock of the week. Unfortunately, Jeff Neal, I think that he's just going to beat Rafael Dos Angeles over the course of three rounds. Rafael is a slower shell of a fighter that he once was, and while he still does, ha does have some fight left in him, he's 40 years old. He's, like I said, he's he's slow. He's not the same guy. I don't think he's going to keep up with a guy in Jeff Neal who is still young, youngish in his career, taking on high-level opponents. I love RDA, and I hope I'm wrong in this one. But, man, I think that Jeff Neal is unfortunately going to be the breaks off of DeSangelo's. Not Nothing against Jeff Neal. Like, honestly, I just, I'm a big fan of Rafael DeSangelo's, but I do think that Jeff Neal is going to get the better of Rafael DeSangelo's in this bout. Now, guys... Before we continue on to the fun part of the video, I want to stop you for just a second. Again, I talk a lot about betting on this channel, and I know that I didn't necessarily... I, I don't know, guys. I'm sorry. I don't know what's going on with YouTube Studio. Typically, I have the proof for you guys. If I get enough comments, like, literally saying that, hey, you're making this up, I, I get it. I get that you could hear this from me, okay? I understand. <laughs> I can make a reaction video to my members-only video talking about what bets I was actually placing before the last card. We did have a clean sweep. So, anyways... If you guys are interested in either supporting the channel or seeing what I'm doing with my own money, whether you want to, again, support the channel or combine my fight knowledge with your own research, you can join the channel membership. It's in the pinned comment description down below or right next to the subscribe button. Every single Thursday or Friday before the event, I'll be posting a community members post and a members only video talking about what I'm doing with my own personal money. Never blindly tail, just either support the channel or combine my fight knowledge with your own research. And you could also get an opportunity to visit Odds Jam, if you guys, it's a tool that we're going to be taking a look at shortly. It's a tool we use in the full card breakdowns. If you are a serious better and have multiple sports books, this, uh, this tool is the perfect for you. You can get a discount over at Odds Jam if you want to check it out in the pinned comment description down below using code Clembat. Thank you so much for listening, guys. Let's move on to the fun part of the video, taking a look at some props. What do we have going on over here? So you have over 1.5s, which I absolutely love. For Bruno Ferreira and Abus Magomedov, I actually don't mind that at all for over 1.5 at minus 115. That I don't hate. I don't hate. I don't know if I'm necessarily going to hit it, especially these like all the decisions that have been happening lately. That's not too bad. Minus 153 for over 2.5 for DeSantos and Jeff Neal too. You know, that's not a bad parlay piece, but again, I'm a big over 1.5 round guy. Minus 300 for over 2.5 for Danny Gay, Lerone Murphy. Yeah, that makes sense. Two really, really tough guys. Over 2.5 for Chmeyev and Riddiker is plus 105. That's very interesting. I'm interested to see if they have a 1.5 over there, but let's see what else we have going on over here. You have the over under 2.5, eh, not really anything there. Rakic and Magomed, Magomed and Kalaev, excuse me. There's actually not too bad odds for some overs and unders this time around, guys. I actually don't mind that. You can see there's nothing for Chris Barnett and Kenny Nizuchuku. Same with, oh, this fight got canceled, though. Renat Fakradinov, Nuslo, and Ruzi Brolev. Somebody stepped in and fought uh, Renat Fakradinov, though. I don't recall who exactly who that was. Ebo Aslan, yeah, that makes sense. That plus money for the over 1.5. Fareed Bashrat, Victor Hugo, I can see that one going over 2.5. There's some potential with the round lines this time around, but every once in a while we see the potential. Never really works out all that too well. But guys, let's continue on over to the fun parlay section of the video. Let's see what we can put together over here, okay? Let's just, first of all, I want to see what all the underdogs get us. Let's see, let's see, let's see. Let's see what we got with all the underdogs every single week, guys. My sister and I place... 10 cents on every underdog to win. $69,000. That's crazy. <laughs> I know it probably, it'll never happen. We were almost millionaires one time when we, when we watched Bellator, guys. So let's take a few confident picks over here. I almost actually included Ebo Aslan in there. I almost did. 
but I, I didn't end up like putting that much uh, confidence through in him. So we can have Bang, we can have Jeff Neal, we can have... Was that... Oh, that was... Oh, and Shara Magomedov. Where's Shara? Where's Shara? There he is. There's Shara. The three confident picks together gets you almost three times your money. That I don't absolutely hate, but still, that's really tough. Like, Shara Magomedov, with the odds that he's at now, I would probably just hit it as is. But even if you want to include, like, Fareed Bashrat and Jeff Neal... That is, depending on how you look at things, it could be worth your money. Let's take a look at, like, if you wanted to add a little bit more. For the underdog opportunities, guys, like, if you want to put Whitaker together along with where is Rakic, oh, my God. Oh, my God. If they both win, that'd be absolutely insane. I would love that. But, like, let's pick, a, let's pick some other fights. Like, if you want to put Ebo Aslan, Fari Basharat, Kenny Nizik Chukwu. No, I don't trust him. May, uh, I don't trust that either. Jeff Neal, Sharl Magomedov, Alexander Rakic. If you want to even chuck in Lerone Murphy there. But even then, that's a really, really tough fight to Robert Whitaker. Let's just pick, like, let's see. <laughs> again, this is the, again, like, guys, this is just the fun part of the video that we're doing over here. I know it's a little bit of a mess. Let's just go with my picks and see what we have going on over here. But, like, I'm not going to avoid the fights that I'm absolutely not sure of, okay? Free Basharat. <laughs> Uh, Jeff Neal, Sharon Michael Madoff, Alexander Rakic, Lerone Murphy, Robert Whitaker, Max Holloway. That is a crazy parlay. Even just five bucks on that's over a grand. Holy. I might actually play that just for the hell of it. <laughs> I think that'd be really fun. But if I was actually playing this, who would I take off? I don't think I, like, if anybody, I would take off Ebo Aslan. But even then, that, that puts it at, like, a big difference, right? Regardless, guys, it's going to be a very interesting week for betting. I can't wait to see what everybody has going on. I can't wait to see how the card plays out. It's just a fantastic card in general, guys. Let me know what you think about the card down below. Thank you so much for being here and watching. Check out this video on screen right now if you want to hear me break down the entire card. You have the full card breakdown and prediction video up there. Thank you so much, guys. Take care.